there's eight shades of gray to adrenal fatigue. I think it's <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> One of the stages is called arousal. Arousal! Oh my God. <laughs> Adrenal fatigue is real, correct? That's an established fact. And why is it an established fact? It's because of myth number two. Okay. Uh, Can you test for it, Dr. Maggie? How yeah. would you test for it? Doctors don't know how to test for it. Yes, yes, and hell yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Adrenal fatigue can be measured scientifically with testing. Okay. It's absolutely true. And the problem is your conventional doctors don't know how to test for adrenal fatigue. Our conventional medical system is really made only to test for what we call adrenal overload, like crazy ass high adrenals, which we call Cushing's or no adrenal function, which we call Addison's disease. So from a blood test or even urine testing standpoint, your medical doctor only knows about all or none, all or none. But yet there's so, so much in between. And if you're not falling in that perfect sweet spot, you're probably dealing with some symptoms. There's eight shades of gray to adrenal fatigue. <laughs> eight shades of gray. <laughs> it's it <sounds> sexy. <laughs> One of the stages is called arousal. Arousal. Oh my God. <laughs> We're getting zesty here today. Oh my God. So, so you absolutely can test for adrenal fatigue. Uh, you can't test for it with your regular conventional doctor via their blood test, their urine testing, because their testing is made to identify all or none. And the rest of us live in these shades of gray of what is actually the reality of adrenal fatigue. Listen, we don't treat thyroid as all or none. You don't have crazy ass thyroid or no thyroid. And that's the only problem all the thyroid hormone problems is actually top, bottom, and everything in the middle. Adrenals are the same. So what's the best way to test for adrenal fatigue? Hi, I'm Meg UMD, and I'm a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform and Transform Protocol. If you're interested in learning what are the root causes of all chronic disease, go ahead and click the link in the description where I have a power pack 30 minute training that goes over what are the five pillars of transform. Go ahead, click the link and I'll see you in that training. So what's the best way to test for adrenal fatigue? When you like to know, we actually talked about it in one of our trainings, multiple of our trainings. I actually have a hormone guide where I go through all the symptoms of hormone imbalance, including adrenal hormone imbalance, and includes a lot of additional trainings around hormones and adrenals. And I can already answer it right now. Best kind of testing for adrenals is going to be saliva hormone testing. And the reason is why, well, I'm going to talk about it in a second. So the adrenals, where are the adrenals? The adrenals is right in the, your back. It's right above the kidneys. Like you have kidneys and on top of it are these two little adrenal glands. And they're small, but they're really powerful. The adrenals on the outside is the adrenal cortex. And on the inside is the adrenal medulla. The cortex, the outer covering of the adrenals, is responsible for some of the hormones that we think a lot about adrenals, which is your DHEA, your cortisol. The cortex is responsible for a lot of the cortisol measurements um, that we're measuring. And cortisol has a curve. It goes up in the morning and goes down in the evening. And you've seen this. If you just draw your blood, just one blood cortisol, one DHEA, you say, oh, you don't have a problem. I don't know how they can tell. It's different all throughout the day. And the key isn't a spot measurement, it's what's happening throughout the day. And there are specific ways to tell these patterns. Unfortunately, here's the problem, even if you order your own um, adrenal testing, um, it's hard to know whether which stage of adrenal fatigue you're really in. And there's also patterns and exceptions to some of these rules. So for me, number one, you got, I think it's great to get, get the data. Data is king. If you don't have a provider being able to order that for you, you can certainly self-order that from our website. Um, and we'll provide the link there. Number two is, is that once you get the results, and even if a doctor, you know, orders a saliva hormone testing for you, uh, a lot of them aren't trained on all these patterns of adrenal fatigue. So there are all these stages of adrenal fatigue, which you guys uh, who are in my programs know about. And yes, you absolutely can test your adrenals and scientific fact, there are these patterns that show up and there are stages of adrenal fatigue. So mm -hmm. scientifically, you can actually get the data and data is king. In fact, that's the name of my last chapter of my book. Data is king and you can get data on it.
And the other part of this is adrenals isn't just about DHEA and cortisol, Mm -hmm. which is the adrenal cortex. There's also the inside of the adrenals, which is called adrenal medulla. The medulla of the adrenals actually create your epinephrine, norepinephrine. These are what we call our fight or flight hormones. And these don't just act throughout your body and around your heart and your circulation. Your brain utilizes norepinephrine and epinephrine in it severely impacts your mood. Well, and Dr. Maggie, we were talking about this, just you and I personally, so many of us deal with that fight or flight, uh, you know, yeah. whether it's a, a very acute situation or whether it's throughout the day and there's small things happening. But when you talk about classic examples of fight or flight, um, do you want to share any stories? Yeah. So here's the thing. We are the best teachers in our areas of greatest suffering. Think about that for a second. You are the best teacher in your area of greatest suffering. And my area of greatest suffering is in adrenal health. Mm -hmm. Um, I know a lot of people who know about me and my story know that I went into early menopause at the age of 36, but that wasn't it. It wasn't that I just went into early menopause, which we think about as our sex hormones. I went into full-blown stage three adrenal fatigue, which Mm -hmm. means I had nothing, nothing left, nothing left in me. And I really want to point out something, which is that one of the third myths about adrenal fatigue is that it can only be ended uh, or dealt with by supplementation. Yes, we are going to talk about supplementation, but I think the biggest point I want to share is really a story of what I went through in the last three months as a great example. When we think about the adrenal gland, specifically about the adrenal medulla, we think about fight or flight. And I really want to explore this topic around what's your fight, what's your flight, because those of us that have adrenal fatigue, this is the underlying thought and emotional pattern that's triggering this havoc of all these adrenal hormones. Okay. Fight or flight. How many of you think about it for a second right now? Every day is living in a state of fight or flight. How many of you know it? And how many of you don't know it. And it's just starting to realize it. And I can tell you right now that I want to go a little bit deeper on fight versus flight. I want to share with you guys my own experience just this week on, I had a wake up call on fight or flight for me. I recently moved to a new home. That's why you guys are seeing a new studio here. And I have been working really hard, tight that deadline (laughs) on publishing my book. And uh, I was under a lot of stress. And interestingly, we just say stress, stress, stress. But I want to define when we say fight, when we say what flight is. Fight typically is a lot of times is think about it as anger or rage Mm -hmm. or attack. How many of you, your go-to reaction to stress is actually anger, rage, or attack? And be honest with yourself because I wasn't honest with myself, okay? Because under duress and stress, when we go to fight or flight, most of us don't realize that anger, rage, and attack is just another way with which we are dealing with stress, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not just your typical stress, but fight is a real response to stress. So I didn't realize that just over the past three months, how much my go-to emotion became anger, irritability, even rage, and how attacking I was um, with people uh, close to me. And, you know, and I had a wake-up call earlier this week where I was unkind. I, like, really responded in a very unkind and angry manner to somebody who really needed my love, care, and support. Mm. And then I went into flight. Let's talk about flight. What is flight? Fight or flight, right? Flight is actually, you think about somebody running away, but what it really is for most of us is either fear or shame. Beating yourself up, I think, too. Shaming yourself, right? Think about how often you're in the fear mode and in a shame mode and beating yourself up. Like, I oscillated... I I didn't realize just how extreme that oscillation had been for me over the last three months, building and building and building. And I kept thinking, nobody else is going to see it. Nobody else is going to see it, right? And until it really spilled out, 
<laughs> where this week I snapped. I really did snap because I was just anger, rage, anger, rage, irritability. And then finally had a wake up call and caught myself. And then I went into shame, guilt, and fear. Mm. Oh my gosh, what's everyone going to think about me now? That's a terrible feeling. Yeah. I bawled my eyes out earlier today because I effed up. I effed up, right? And this is the reality though. And, and I'm ashamed of how I behaved earlier this week. I really am. But it, it, this is where I realized that we don't realize just how much fight, flight, fight or flight, fight or flight dominates us. And it becomes our go-to every day. And we just say we're stressed, but it's really important that the most important thing that you guys could do to end adrenal fatigue is to recognize the pattern of fight or flight that's in you that's happening every day. Because every time you go fight or flight, you're actually triggering your adrenal medulla to release adrenaline, which is epinephrine, norepinephrine, okay? And that's causing these huge swings in emotional state, huge swings in emotional state. And it's affected by your adrenal hormones. Adrenal hormones really feed and respond to our emotional state, right? And I, it can sneak up so much so that, you know, you sometimes will need a wake up call and sometimes it's the data from your adrenals and sometimes it's the trail of tears you've left behind <laughs> because of your own fight or flight. Hey, I want to say thank you for sharing that personal story because so many people, first of all, don't even recognize that they did something like that, have the mm -hmm. remorse, the introspectiveness to want to do something different in the future. So yeah. um, a lot of respect for you for being able to recognize that, share that, and want to correct it because we all deal with that. We all do that. We all snap on people when we don't want to. And most often it's some of the people that are closest to us, right? That we love the most or that we want to care for the most or help the most. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, like you were saying, this is all about adrenal or fight or flight. And we need to find ways to better manage that so that these things don't happen. And we don't have that cycle of guilt and shame. Hi, and thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in actively looking for a solution to your problem and you'd like to work with us, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and click the link in the description to book a chat with our team. What that's going to do is it's going to bring you to a calendar, pick a time that's going to suit your needs best. It's going to be about a 15 minute phone call. After you book that call, there's going to be a link to a short questionnaire. And that's really important for you to fill out because it's for us to get to know you better and helps us to better prepare to make the most of our time together. After you fill out the short application, it's going to take you to a page where there's a couple resources. What I want you to do is go ahead and click two of those and watch those. Uh, two trainings, they're going to really best prepare you for your phone call with us to make the best use of our time together. I and my team look forward to talking to you to learn more about you to see if we are indeed a good fit to work together. Thank you.